Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today I've been car booting. Um, basically, I've not been car booting that much this year. Um, that's actually why this is really the first um, pickups, car boot pickups video I've, um, I've done all year. Uh, I've been to a couple and to be honest it's been really really poor pickings, there's not been anything you know good or vintage uh, really to do um, a video about me I'm sure you don't want to see a video about a Phillips coffee maker <laughs> uh, I picked a um, Phillips coffee maker up at a boot sale a couple of weeks back for like a couple of quid and that's nice but um, it wasn't really anything to make a video of anyway I went um, car booting this morning and I did actually pick up a couple of things worthy of perhaps doing a quick uh, video on so uh, We've got a um, little flat panel TV there. We've got um, a 1980s um, cassette player boom box. And we've got a strange little green thing that I don't know what it is. So um, I'll, I'll reset the camera. Um, we'll have a quick look at some of these things that I've got and um, see what we've got on. So I'm quite curious to find out what, what this is. Um, it was only cheap. I found it in the bottom of a box of tools, um, spanners and hammers and all sorts of bits and bits, and it cost me fifty p. So uh, yeah, uh, we'll see what um, we'll see what that is. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'll um, reset the camera and we'll have a look at um, we'll have a look at this um, Sanyo um, radio cassette boom box and this um, little um, LCD monitor. So uh, back in a second. Okay, that's better. You can see what's um, going on now. Right. Well, this is the the first thing that I um, picked up, and this isn't this isn't something I'd normally really um, look at or go for, but these are starting to get um, quite collectible now, um, reasonably sought after. Uh, I've j actually just looked this one up on eBay, and um, these sell from. Between like forty and sixty pounds in um, in good condition, um, and I paid a lot less for this than that. Now there is a reason why. Um, basically, I was walking around the car boot and I saw a stall with this on. It actually had two of these, uh, not exactly the same model. They were both Sanyos, and there was this one, and um, one that looked virtually identical to this, only it was only a single. Um, cassette player uh, as well this is the twin um, cassette player and um, I asked him about them and the single one he actually wanted ten pounds for it he said it works absolutely perfectly everything works on it the cassettes good on it and everything um, this one however um, he said the radio works brilliantly on it uh, he said it's a really good radio he said but um, last time he tried it, he said neither of the neither of the tape players would do anything, they wouldn't work. Um, we know what that's going to be. Um, it's going to be belts. Um, these have a couple of rubber drive belts inside them and over the years those drive belts perish. Um, sometimes actually turn to like a sticky goo unfortunately which is a bit of a mare to clean off but um, that's all part of the course with this type of stuff. Um, so um, I got this for um, two quid. So I, I didn't think that was bad at all, um, two quid. Um, I do actually plan to, I'm not planning to keep this. Um, I will um, I will probably actually do a full video on this. Um, I will get a belt kit for it. I'll um, redo the belts. I'll give it a full refurb and um, this can go up uh, for sale on eBay. Um, it will make a nice uh, cassette player, um, radio cassette player for someone actually. Um, but what I thought we'd do in this video is, uh, the chap did assure me that apart from the cassette players, everything worked on it. So uh, I've got a um, figure of eight lead here. So let's plug it in and um, just see what it actually does do. See whether it does indeed um, work well enough. I mean, it's got a few scratchy controls or something like that. That is nothing to really worry us um, about. In fact, if it's completely dead, that's nothing to really worry us about, is it? But. Um, We'll see if the guy was um, truthful and whether it is actually um, as described. Looks like two quid, you can't really uh, complain. Now, which side do you plug the power into? 
I do plug it in on the back. Ah, there we go, it's at the back there. In fact, like, before I plug it in, let's have a look round it. Because it's in super nice condition, really. There was a bit of grot and muck between the buttons, and you, you can tell it's been used. Yo, know, it's been used, but it's certainly, certainly no, never ever been abused. There's no sign of it being bashed about or anything like that. The only real sign of wear on it, to be honest, is if we have a look at the um, tuning control there, there is some wear. I don't know if you can make that out on the camera. So we can zoom it in just so you can um, perhaps just see this. Get that into shot. I don't know if you can make that out there, but um, basically the silver is worn off along there and around there along the buttons. But essentially that's that's the only real wear on the um, on the entire uh, radio cassette player. Even the aerial, which I mean the aerials usually get damaged on these. The aerial is in absolutely A1 A1 condition, there's no damage to it, there's no bent elements or anything on it, it works perfectly, it clips into place even the clips that hold the aerial in place aren't broken off or damaged the handle isn't bent or damaged in any way um, let's spin it round, because what we haven't done, we, we could say all this and then someone could have left some batteries in it for uh, many, many years and it'd be in a horrendous state inside. So uh, let's have a look in the battery compartment. Do you know what? I don't think these things are ever actually being run on batteries. They're, there's not even any wear to the end of the springs there. It's, I don't think these things ever have batteries in it. I think it's probably always just been run off a... Um, mains plug yeah that's really that's in really really nice condition really really nice condition let's uh, put some power into it and see if it actually does anything but it's currently set to um, tape let's he did say that the tape doesn't work, but uh, well, the amplifiers obviously do. Um, yeah, we've got no rotation or anything on there. Nothing's going round. Capstan's not going round. So I'm pretty sure we've just got bad, bad drive belts. Try rewind, pass forward. No, nothing on that. Deck. Let's try this deck again. Let's uh, press play. Then we've got some noise from the speakers. I can hear the motor going, but we've got absolutely no no signs of any activity. As like I said, as he said, um, let's try the um, let's try. I'll turn the volume down. But we've got a volume and a tone control at the top there. Let's put it over onto radio. I can't play it for too long for obvious reasons. Let's extend the aerial. Let's see if we can get an FM stereo signal. See if we'll get the stereo lock light to come on. I don't know because I'm down in the uh, workshop here whether the FM signal is going to be strong enough, but. Very sensitive. <laughs> on the actual um, potentiometer tune. And, uh, <laughs> and all the 
in on people or on our doorstep. But and that sounds maybe really, some of really our good. women are visiting this place. We don't like it. We don't want it. We don't want it here. That, that's that's the idea. That's the from the interview that um, I took. A lot of the people were Not more that, concerned about sharing that part of the story than saying oh, there's an Indian Pakistani thing. Because oh, fine tune. to people now, I think. Um, the oh, idea FM of mode, more no and stereo. So that seems quite that in. over. Yeah, and then so um, it does work. You know, it suddenly uh, hit the headlines back then. <laughs> And because, um, I've done a long trip over to Russia and there we go. Um, Iceland and Sweden and all that area. I've done the. Let's see if we can pick up Pre say Pals, Classic FM again. But <laughs> there we are. No, there's not even any crackle on the volume control. Let's try, um, it's got, even got shark wave on it actually. Let's go over to shark wave. <laughs> and that's what the fine tuning control on the side's for. That's not, not, that's not a feature I'd expect to find on a, um, like a boom box like this. Yeah, it's actually got a fine tuner for the um, shortwave. <laughs> See if we can pick anything else up. There isn't that much actually broadcast on the shortwave anymore, unfortunately. We're not in a great um, pickup area for um, AM radio here. We're not in a great pickup uh, area for radio full stop, to be fair. But that's not bad. There's very little at this end of the band where I live. It's picking up all the stations I can normally pick up on a decent radio. You know, it's it certainly sounds pretty good. It's definitely worth a of a uh, full restoration. Let's try long wave. Now again, there's very, very little on long wave, but we should be able to pick up Radio 4 and RT Radio 1 if it's a good performer. Unless, unfortunately, we don't seem to be... Unless it's just being drowned out by things like the camera, which is a possibility. Just there. You know, so it's a bit of a bust on uh, long wave, but medium wave's nice and strong. <laughs> My only thing is, he, he did play last season, and you'll notice yourself does. Missing pre oh, actually, the, fa the fine tuning does work on um, all the AM bands. Still can't really pick that RT Radio 1 up much, and we can't get Radio 4 long wave at all for some reason. But 
yeah, um, I'm quite pleased with that for two quid. Um, that will be um, an upcoming video, me thinks, um, doing a full service on this, getting the um, getting the cassette decks um, working properly and um, giving it a really, really good clean up and making it as nice as I possibly can. So uh, yeah, that's the first thing that I um, picked up. Let's get that out of the way. Oops. We'll, uh, we'll leave the power lead behind because we might need that in a minute. And the next thing I picked up, again this is not vintage at all, but it is very useful if you collect retro and vintage computers. Um, these are again getting harder and harder to get now um, and what I mean by that is a screen that's actually a 4-3 aspect ratio like that. Um, whenever I see these at car boot sales, small, you know, 12 inch, 14 inch, like this kind of size um, TVs uh, with a 4 to 3 aspect ratio and they're not silly money, I grab them. Um, because I can always pass these on to other retro gamers who want a small little retro gaming rig. Or a, a screen for a specific console or um, computer or something like that. They don't want something too big. Um, a CRT set's you know too too cumbersome. They want something small, you know, neat, lightweight. Uh, but they still want the four three ratio. So I, you know, like I said, I can pass these on quite a lot. I can flip these for a little, not a lot of money, but a little bit of money um, to the right person. Like I said, if you want, say you. Mega Drive or an Amiga or something, you want to set up, uh, these are brilliant for it. Um, I saw this on a stall, it was under the stall. Um, I asked the chap how much he wanted for it, he said um, he'd take a fiver for it. Um, I always want for um, a bit of a deal. I offered him three quid and he um, said, Yeah, take, th take it for three quid. So uh, that was three pounds. One nice thing with it though was. Um, and you don't always um, pick them up. Not that they're needed, because you do have all the controls you really need. Um, yeah, all the controls you really need, um, usually on the set. But um, this did indeed actually come with the um, come with the remote control. Again, um, he said that it worked last time it was used. It's been in the back of a wardrobe for um, donkeys. Uh, fortunately, he did. Um, he did take the batteries out of the um, out of the remote control. And now I thought I'd picked up actually out of the other room a spare set of batteries um, to try with this, and I can't remember what the hell I've done with them. Then um, so that we don't need the batteries to um, to actually see whether the TV works, do we? Um, let's see what we need for power. Oh, anyway, let's go go through it a little bit it's a sharp so it's a reasonable you know make um, input wise I mean you do get these with everything on them um, VGA um, I'm not, I don't think I've ever seen one with HDMI that's still um, 4.3 but um, you see them with VGA DVI um, you know composite um, SCAR SVID everything on them uh, this one not so much we've got a um, an S video input We've got um, a composite video and um, left-right audio on the back. Um, we've got a headphone port and then we just have a scar socket. So we've got RGB on the scar socket there and we've got composite on the back there. So for most sets, you know, um, basic um, systems that we'd use this with, that's absolutely fine. That's what we want. It's really the RGB um, scar on the side there that's the uh, most important for what we want to use it for. Um, power, what, oh, where's power on this one? Ah, there we go, there's power. It does have a slight, a slight rattle to it, so uh, that's a little concern, but um, I'm sure it's just something flopping about inside the case. I'll give it some power. And, uh, oh. So it's actually got a proper hard uh, power switch as well. Oh, there we go. So um, this is probably got, this will have an analog tuner in it. I don't think this will have a um, digital tuner in it, so it won't tune into any uh, modern stations. But that's not what we're just using it as a monitor, basically. 
um, let's see what we can do here. Is there a menu button yet? So I'm not sure how you um, go between the inputs yet. That's um, how you set up the you know the actual picture, contrast, brightness, colour, tint, sharpness. Yeah, you know, it's quite nice that you can actually really set it up. Um, we'll off that. Two, one. Hopefully this should be the AV input. That says five, four. Perhaps we're actually going to need the um, remote to um, set this up. Or at least put it into AV mode. Oh my god, what's that button there? Ah, there we go. That's how you set There's a, a separate button on the top to put it into um, AV mode. So you don't really need the remote control at all. External one, external two, and then back to TV. So excellent. Um, what I'll do, I'll just quickly pause the video and I'll go and get something we can um, throw up this as a um, source and. Um, actually see what, what it looks like and how well it works so uh, back in a sec right we're back and I've actually I've put some batteries in the um, remote so we can give the remote control a try and I've got it hooked up to um, quite appropriately um, little mega drive there this will allow us to test a few things on it to be honest I'll switch on well, I'm going to have switch the TV on. Let's try with the remote. So that's sent the line green there. TV's on. Let's switch the um, Mega Drive on and let's have a look. There we go. Now that doesn't look bad. Perfect. Yes, this is going to work really nicely for you know things like this, um, vintage consoles and Amiga, anything like that. It's it's an ideal screen. It needs a bit of a clean. Um, it's a bit dirty in places. It's absolutely filthy with dust and stuff around the edges there. So I'm going to have to give it a really really good clean. But it is nice that it's got the um, it's got the remote control with it. In fact, while we've got this um, while we've got this um, set up, let's get rid of the um, we'll get rid of the Mega Drive. Put that out of the way. And what else I've got is I've got one of these. Atari, you know, it's um, basically a 2600 in a joystick kind of thing. Uh, what I thought we'd just do is uh, we can use this to test the um, composite input on the back. Um, just make sure that that works okay as well. So we'll plug that in like that. And this should be on the second. Um, well, let's see if it can recognise it. I doubt it. No, we'll have to actually switch. Um, we'll have to switch inputs. So let's we'll see if we can do that on the um, remote control. External one. Uh, that's the sky that we've just done. This should be the. There we go. Look at that. And this is advent. Um, reset. Let's, let's try um, asteroids, shall we? Oh, start. That seems to work all right. Yeah, that works okay. Let's try the volume up a little bit. Oops, wrong button. Uh, that button. No, that button. There we go. Um, 
volume up. There we go. Yeah, that works. Uh, that works passably well. In fact, one last, one last thing I'd like to try. Just thinking about it. I wonder if this can um, accept a um, NTSC um, composite signal. Because that would make it super, super useful because you could use it for with something like a Famicom. Um, in fact, what I have got over here is my um, Famicom clone. I think they should still have some power in the battery in the um, hopefully that's still got some power in the um, battery. We'll have to see. Let's see if this is going to uh, work because it'll just give us um, an idea whether it's actually going to um, work with um, NTSC as well so I'll just quickly pause the video while I go and find the AV lead. I'll be back in a sec. Okay right so we've got the um, basically it's a Famicom clone in um, a homemade wooden box that I put together um, a while back but let's switch this on. And look at that it can actually display a um, NTSC um, can actually display um, an NTSC image. It don't look too bad. I've always been bad at Contra. But it gives an idea that it's, you know, it works all right. Anyway, I'm sure you don't want me to watch me play computer games. So let's switch that off. So yeah, um, that's basically proved that is definitely a. Um, a decent little uh, monitor. It's going to be able to use, be used for all sorts of things. Like I say, it's excellent for little consoles. Uh, it'd be okay for using with an Amiga, uh, anything like that. And like I said, um, even better is the fact that it will accept an NTSC signal. So um, anything you import over from the US or Japan or anywhere like that uh, will work with it. So for three quid, it was definitely, definitely worth um, grabbing. So let's get on to the. Oh, I must switch that off actually. Turn that off. Cause actually, that's another nice thing is actually got a proper physical um, on off switch rather than a, um, a touch button. So it doesn't have um, standby power or anything like that. Anyway, let me get you zoomed in onto the. Uh, oops, that's the wrong way again. Let me get you zoomed in onto the um, workspace here and we'll have a look at the. In fact, I've just realised that this is green and this is green, so when I stick this on there, you can hardly be able to see it, are you? Right. Uh, is that better? There we go. That's better, isn't it? You can see that now. Yep. Right. So, um, as I said, there was a chap with a box of um, a box of tools, um, various things, and I, when you see a box like that, I always like to have a bit of a rummage in the bottom of it and I found that. Now I presume this is something to do with um, British Telecom. It's got um, Cobb written on the back of it there. It's got Cobb written on the side of it there. Um, on here, uh, I don't know if you can make that out. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in. Basically, it's got GPO, which is, um, I think it stands for um, General Post Office or something like that. Um, but it's basically um, the British Post Office, uh, what all their stuff used to be marked. Uh, GPO is also the uh, what used to be the um, telephone company, because back, uh, back in the day, 
and the British Postal Service and the um, telephone company were basically interlinked, they were pretty much one in the same. Um, so whatever this thing is, it's a 165A DAE, but it's got that, someone's used the O on there and wrote COB on there as well. Um, it appears to have two, well three controls on it, as oh well, the middle one says it's a fuse. And I presume these are like potentiometers or something like that. Although, I don't know, no, hang on. Do they? Oh right, no they're not potentiometers, they're, um, they're like banana plugs. The banana plugs at the end's been, uh, let me get you zoomed out a little bit because, there we go. Yeah, because you can still see that if I keep it on the paper, can't you? Um, so those are like little banana plugs. It's got that COB as well scratched into the back. Now, I'm guessing that might have been who owned it or used it. The question is, what is it? So I think it's time for, um, as Dave Jones um, on the EEV blog says, um, a two minute teardown. Uh, I think that's a fuse, it does say fuse on the end of it. So, yeah, and we've got a little, what's that, like a 1 amp I think, or a 0.5 amp um, fuse in there. Let me grab a screwdriver and uh oh I've got flat blade. It's, there's obviously something inside it, I can hear it rattling. Um grab a screwdriver and let's get this thing um, open and see what's actually inside it. It's obviously designed to be like worn on some trousers or something like that, because that's a belt clip. So you know that'd go either that or onto a uniform, I don't know, it, it obviously it is designed to clip onto something, onto a strap or something like that. Let's have a look inside it and see what it is. Well those are captive those screws. I wonder if we've got a battery compartment or a battery or something um, inside here. Could it be a little speaker, a little amplifier? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, again, that's that's captive. Them screws just pull out, but they won't actually come out of the uh, unit. I've got a third here. Again, yeah, that's another captive screw. So, okay, right. Okie dokie, so we've got, is it a little amplifier or what? We've got a PP3 9 volt battery snap. We've got some of this horrible degrading foam, which is just turn into turn into dust and mush and we've got a microphone in ah ah I think I might know what this is or at least what half of this is I think there should be another part to this and you'd have two of them and you'd be able to clip them onto a line and be able to talk down the line uh, without actually using a telephone. I think that's what this is. And the reason that it's got a nine volt battery holder like that is um, that'll be a carbon based microphone, a carbon granule um, microphone. And they don't work without a voltage on them. I'm actually just wondering, I wonder if we have a little bit of fun with this. Um, we might actually be able to get this to work and um, I've got a speaker here. We should uh, I'll put that in just a, just a random um, old speaker, it's nothing, um, something I pulled out of an old sub. Um, there. Right, let's go. 
to the back there so we can see everything that's happening. Um, just bear with me a second, folks. In fact, is this all still connected up? Yeah, everything looks to be connected up in it. Um, let me just go and get a um, battery and we'll see if we can actually um, see if this thing works or not. So, uh, back in a sec. Okay, well I've got a I've got a new PP3 battery there, so um, it is a brand new one. In fact, this is to go in my multimeter, but um, we can use it for this just for testing. Um, I've got a couple of um, crop leads there, so we can do a lash up, and yeah, what we'll try. That needs a little bit of a clean, a bit of a uh, bit of muck and corrosion. I, th I don't actually think that's battery. I think that's to do with the um, foam um, degrading in there actually. Let's give that a bit of a clean up, see if we can give it a fighting chance to um, work. I mean, these, these carbon granule microphones can just die from um, old age, but let's see. Uh, let's see if this is going to have any uh, have any life in it. What we'll do? Uh, we'll take them binding posts. Push them back in there, like that. I'm hoping that fuse is all right. No, we could always bypass it. And then we take the speaker. What's this about? Six ohms. Um, it's not really ideal, but let's have a look. We should be able to get this to produce um, some audio. Um, If it's working in that um, speaker. I think that's actually picking up off the camera. Hello, one, two. Um, should be right or not? I've played with these little con these um, microphone inserts in the past. Uh, we used to mess about with them when I was a kid, because uh, one of my friends, when I was a kid, his dad was an electrician, and he had um, a few sets of them that he got for um, basically working in um, buildings for testing runs of wires in buildings, and we'd ended up getting hold of a set of the big old Bakelite things. I remember us uh, messing about with them with some old, I um, can't remember what the wire was we got hold of, but we had you know, we had metres and metres of it and uh, where we lived, we, ra we remember us running wires across this um, old woodland um, where we lived um, and connecting up the phones at either end of it and um, using them as an intercom. And they were basically the same kind of thing as this, it's just they were like Bakelite hand pieces rather than something fancy like this. But they contained exactly the same kind of you know, um, carbon, uh, mic carbon granule microphone as this. Um, I don't remember them making quite such weird squealing noises as that. Let's try connecting it up again. I can only guess that's picking up some kind of switch mode. Um, in fact, let me try unplugging the charger that the camera's plugged into. Because there should be enough charge in the battery anyway. But still, I can only presume that's picking up some kind of interference from um, the camera or something like that. I'll only know that once I've <laughs> finished filming this and switch the camera off and see if that noise. I don't think it matters which way around these are, it shouldn't do. No, but... Ah, right, so it's that that's making the noise. Not the speaker. Ah. No, that is weird. So... Is it just some kind of, let me just try, just short it rather than putting it through that speaker. Is it just some kind of continuity tester? Could it be as simple as that and that's um, 
a sounder out of um, like a trim phone or something like that because they used to use like a really shrill um, sounder, the um, trim phones from the late 60s. That could actually, rather than being a, a carbon granule microphone, that could actually be a, um, a sounder for um, one of them. And this could just be a continuity tester. And I could be, I could have been barking up the wrong tree. I'm beginning to think that's exactly what this is. It's just some kind of um, continuity tester. An audio um, continuity tester, like a buzzer. Doesn't sound very buzzery, but yeah. Actually, if it is, um, it's going to need a little bit of um, refurbishment work. Well, that actually could be quite a nice, handy, useful thing. In fact, I could understand them with um, having a belt clip on it. I don't know. Um, if you ever worked for the Beat, uh, British Telecom uh, or the GPO um, and you know what this thing is, do you want to uh, leave a comment for me in the um, in the comments? So it's either um, what I think, you know, it's some kind of lineman's handpiece and it actually connects and allows you to, you know, that is a um, carbon granule microphone, hence why it needed the battery. Um, and it is what I first thought it was and um, there's obviously something awry with it or it's actually just a continuity tester and the idea you know, you'd put that on your belt you'd have wires you know on there um, test probes and you'd use it to actually identify a um, you know a break in a circuit or something like that and it just gives you a nice audio indication I could imagine that being useful if you was you know up the top of a telegraph pole or something you need to uh, find a break in a wire or something you can have that clip to your belt the wires coming off while you're probing. Um, so yeah, like I say, anyway, it was 50p. Um, so I'm not going to complain at that for 50p because at the very, very least, uh, I can use the case and make something out of it. I mean, it could make a nice little um, signal tracer or um, a continuity tester or um, anything really. It's a nice, handy little um, case, especially if I'm in two banana plug sockets already built in um, a fuse there we could replace that perhaps with a potentiometer or something yeah uh, like I said leave comments in the um, leave me um, comments in the uh, description thingy underneath um, underneath the video you know where to, where to stick them um, anyway I'm going to leave it there for now like I said this was just going to be a quick little video showing you what I um, what I picked up at the um, car boot sales um, this morning so um, what did I spend? Spent five pound fifty in total, including that um, Sanyo boom box, the um, Sharp um, TV. I'm super pleased with that. I'm really, really pleased that it does um, NTSC as well as um, PAL. So um, yeah, and an interesting little green box for um, 50p. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Hope you enjoyed this little video. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.